Hi everyone, this is Andre from ChromaFX Films here, and welcome to part 2 of my 2D game development tutorial series. In this video, I'll be covering how to create a character and animate him. So we'll jump right into it. This is the character that I'm going to be animating. I made this guy in Photoshop very quickly. You can make whatever you want, but in case you want to follow along with me, I will give you the download link to this little guy right here, this box character. So let's uh, get right to it. So when you select the character from your project tab, you're going to get a whole bunch of options in the inspector. And this is very important. So when your character has several limbs, and as you can see, my character has two feet, two eyes and the body. So that's obviously more than one. It's very important that right here in the sprite mode, you set this to multiple. That's basically self explanatory when it's single, you're uh, sprite is only going to have one object so this is if it's not animated or you just want to have a texture a single texture and we're going to hit apply all right the rest of these options look okay uh, but while we're at it the max size right here this is how you can save some uh, space and memory when you are building your game this is the size that uh, unity is going to be rendering your texture quality at no matter what the actual quality of the texture is when you imported it. As you can see down here, I have a very strange uh, resolution. This is not standard. It's 323 by 464. I'm going to compress the max size down to roughly 512. So this is about, this is half the size now. So the file is now a little bit smaller. So when I build the game, the overall file size of the entire game will be slightly smaller. So over here, we're going to press the Sprite Editor button. You're going to get this window. And what do you do now? Well, if you select over here, the slice button, you will get a drop down menu here. And there's a couple options here. We are going to use automatic. And the difference between automatic and grid, if you have a grid that is used for sprite sheets and sprite sheets, there should be an image on the screen right now. Uh, they are a series of images on a single texture or sheet, uh, hence the name. And Unity will cycle through those images rapidly to create a motion graphic. And automatic is for what we're doing here with the independent limbs. And if I click the slice button, each object, it's hard to see, there you go. If I select it, they all get their own squares. And that's basically Unity giving them their individual anchor points. So we're going to hit up here, apply. And now the character is split into several limbs. So right here in the drop down menu, if you press the little arrow, you can see it has all these different body parts. I'm going to drag, click and drag into the scene view here. And here is my body. I'm going to add in the eye. And the other eye, mm, we'll get to him in a second. We may or may not use that, not sure. In the meantime, here we go. Okay. So let's see, did he happen to have any arms? No, he didn't, okay. So now we got the four body parts. Now what you wanna do, first thing is rename each part. So I'm going to name them accordingly. And if you select all of them, you click one and you hold shift and then you click the next object in the list, Unity will select all of the objects in between. If you press F, the camera will focus on him. Not that I need to do that here, but I like having my objects focused on so I can tell what is selected. Um, sometimes if you have objects that are far apart and you accidentally selected one object that you did not want to, let's say if there was 30 objects in this list instead of four, it's very helpful to press F and then see where your camera is grouping all the objects. So what we want to do here is we want to make sure all the body parts are connected to each other under one parent object. Parent objects are groups that will hold all other sub objects underneath it that are they're called child objects. They'll hold it together. So they're all uh, referred to as one object and you can access each individual limb through coding, uh, which we will get into a little later in the, in the uh, tutorial series. So we're going to select game object and then create empty. So now we're just going to get this blank game object. 
we're going to rename this to player and we are going to select all the sub parts and drag it underneath player. So now they're all connected. By the way, if you make a movement that you aren't happy with or you did uh, a movement by accident, you can undo it by pressing Control Z. So now we want this guy to be animated. I'll move this camera out of the way here. Or actually, if you can see down in the scene view, I mean game view right here. This is where you can see, this is what the uh, player will see when they play the game. This is what the game camera looks like. And the background is blue, I can change the color. But we're going to leave it at the default. So what you want to do now is undo your main folder that's holding all your assets. Create a new folder. Let's call it Animations. And we're going to select the player in the scene. We're going to press component up here. We're going to add animation. And then we're going to add an animator. Excellent. And then up here, we're going to do window. And then we're going to load up the actual animation window or animator window. Sorry. There is a difference. Yes, they're very close in names, but they do completely different things. The animator holds all the animations. And the animation is just an animation component, which uh, tells the object to play a certain animation that you set. So you have this blank window here because there's no animations attached. So we're going to add an animation. If you press window, animation, you'll get this window here. And we're going to press add curve. And let's call this idle. So idle is equivalent to standing still. So if your player is not moving, you want him to be doing some action. And that's what this is. So let's move this out of the way. All right, there you go. So what do we want this character to do? Well, let's see. Let's say we want the body to move up and down. Okay, but the problem is the eye is not attached. So let's make sure the eye is attached to the body. Let's make it a child object. There you go. So now... The eye will move. So let's set add curve, select the body, and we are going to enable this little plus symbol for the position, which basically means all now we are animating um, only the position of the body and nothing else. So we're going to say at half a second, it's a little lower. If you want to move the object on a specific axis if you hold shift and then click on the object and then drag in whatever direction you want it to go um, vertical or, or horizontal it will snap to that axis it's a very helpful tool so i can drag it up and down and not worry about it moving out of place all right so if you play it not bad all right but let's have a little more motion Let's see, maybe we'll move a little bit further down. All right, cool. It's a little, a little more. It's a little jerky. So if we press the curves button down here, you will get this menu. And this is where we can adjust the sharpness of the animation or if we want it to transition smoothly. These are uh, all the little details. So once we set a keyframe, which are these these dots, these are called keyframes. We can adjust it here. If you right click on a, on, a, uh, on a keyframe, on one of these points, you'll get this menu. Free Smooth allows you to uh, rotate accordingly to that one point. Um, but if there is a separate point, that's a bad example. Here you go, here is one. If you do Free Smooth, it will uh, affect both sides. And if you do Flat, it will flatten it and if you do broken you can adjust each side individually so all are helpful for specific situations now if we play the animation he's smoother okay, this camera's in the way i'm going to move this there you go all right nice looks good now let's create another animation so select this little tab here create new clip and we're going to call this walk 
Same thing, except we're going to add some feet. So let's say if he's walking faster, we want him to move up and down faster. So we'll shorten the time by half. That could work. Oh, what did I do there? There you go. Let's make sure it's adjusted. By the way, I zoomed in by pressing F. It's also the focus key. Also, make sure when you are animating or moving the uh, parts and you want your character to be animating and setting keyframes, make sure you have this record button set. This is very important. All right, there you go. So now let's have his feet mo uh, moving. Let's do and position, I mean position and rotation. All right, there you go. And this is where you could be creative and animate it according to whatever you think looks right. Um, I'm just animating for what I think looks right. You could have something very different and that is completely okay. So I'm going to animate this for a bit and then I will I will cut the video and I will come back once it's finished. All right, here we go. It's a nice simple little walking animation. And let's create a jump very quick. Same process. So now I have three animations for the character. Now let's go back to that animator tab and here you go. You see all three of them here, but why are they grayed out? Well, that just means that they are not active. Nothing is happening to them and they can't be called in uh, the game through scripting because there's just no connection. They're just floating there. So we can connect them by right clicking on the, uh, the default animation, which is idle, pressing make transition and let's make one to walk. Right click walk and make a transition to jump and from idle to jump, jump to idle, jump to walk and walk to idle. Now let me explain what that was. That can be very confusing first time. So what transitions are is they allow the game to uh, use logic to check if the player is doing certain things at certain times. For example, if you are standing still and you jump, you don't want your character to play your walking animation first. You want your character to play the jump animation. But how does the game know that you're not walking? Well, that's where we set these parameters here. These are basically variables that we can tell the game that can be called later through scripting, which is also the code. Um, that's what we call it. It's, it's called scripting. And we can tell the game to access those certain variables and either set them from zero to one, true and false, according to what kind of vari variable you're using. And that will correspond to these arrows. So let's, for example, I can set from idle to walk. Let's make a parameter and say a float walk. Right now it's zero. Let's say over here in conditions, this is where you set the variable. If walk is greater than 0.5, let's set uh, something to happen and we'll call it in the script. By the way, up here, what I was just dragging here, this is how fast you want your transition to uh, be. So if your character is standing still and then he's walking, how fast do you want that second animation to play? Because they will transition between each other very smoothly and it's a, a very powerful feature. So for demonstration purposes, it's not very important, but I'm going to adjust this to something a little bit more realistic to what a uh, professional polished 2D game would have. So now we're gonna set the uh, next variable. So if you're walking and the walk is less than 0.5. We want something to happen again. And for jump, we're going to create another float. Jump. If jump is greater than 0.5 and walk is less than 0.5, uh, if walking is less than 0.5, that means that your character must be standing still. So it will transition from the idle animation to the jump instead of from idle to walk to jump. And then do the same thing back. All 
All right. Walk to jump. Okay, so if they're both true, so if you're walking and you're jumping, but you're walking first because you can't get to walk without starting at idle, you will play the jump animation. And then let's go back. So if walking is still true, but you're not jumping, transition back to the walk animation. You can preview your animations down here. So see what they look like. See, that's how fast the transition is going to be. Typically, you want your jump transition to be almost instant because when you're jumping, your character has to react under a um, very specific amount of time. So uh, to get a more realistic feel or a more satisfying feel or more responsive, I should say, it's helpful to have transition time very low or minimum. So now we have the variable set. And let's make sure that when you're jumping, you're not looping. So he doesn't just keep jumping and you can double click the jump animation or select it here in the project um, tab and uncheck loop time. Walking, of course, we want to loop and idle. We want to loop. Good. Everything's set. So now we have a basic character. That is all I'm going to be covering in this video. In the next video, I'm going to be finishing him up and I'm going to be programming him and show you, showing you guys how you can use him in a scene. So I'm going to create a very simple scene, uh, add some physics on him and make him actually move around. So we'll get into the more exciting part of game development in the next video and I hope to see you there. So thanks for watching guys. See you next time.